So last year in 2020, I started tracking every single one of my wares in my wardrobe. And I did this for a few reasons. A lot of you guys think I'm nuts to do it, but for me, it was a really great exercise in understanding my personal style and more importantly, understanding what I actually wore versus what I thought I wore. My wardrobe for many years was a huge pain point. I was an over consumer. I was shopping all the time, adding to my wardrobe but never really using my wardrobe. And this not only really helped me understand and figure out my personal style, but it also really helped me declutter and get rid of the excess that was ultimately just confusing me and making me feel really overwhelmed. And I finally got around to breaking down which items I wore the most. So I'm gonna be sharing that with you in today's video. And before we get started, I really wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Karma. I've worked with them many times before. They're a great supporter of this channel. And especially with things like holidays coming around, gift giving, all that fun stuff. I think it's a really useful tool that can help you save some money while you're shopping for gifts or even for yourself. And if you haven't heard of Karma before, they are a Google Chrome extension. They also have an app and they will alert you anytime an item goes on sale or if there's a coupon code. So, you know, Black Friday has just passed and I ended up using Karma to buy a few gifts for some family members and even a couple of things for myself, like this knit crop tank from Uncle Studios. And Karma was able to let me know about it. I've personally unsubscribed to a bunch of marketing emails, so I don't really pay attention to when sales are going on. But there's still things that I have my eye on here and there, whether it be for myself or as a gift. And I like to use Karma to build up a wish list and just let it do the work. I find the app is really useful to just sort of narrow down and streamline what it is you're looking for without getting distracted and while being able to get the best price possible. And it's really easy to install. All you have to do is download the Google Chrome extension, start building your wish list. You can create custom categories, anything you want. And Karma will either send you an email or a push notification on the app when the items that you've saved have gone on sale. And if you are ready to buy, if you're using the desktop on Google Chrome, Karma will scan the web for coupon codes and apply them at checkout automatically. And if you're shopping from specific retailers, Karma also gives cash back and even gives back to a good cause. So thank you again to Karma for sponsoring this video. And if you were interested in installing the app or the extension yourself, you can click the link in the description down below. So if you guys are interested in doing this yourself, I will have a blog post linked down below that has a free version of the spreadsheet. It's just a Google spreadsheet, so nothing fancy. I know a lot of you guys think that this is really hardcore, but it really wasn't that big of a deal. It's just like any other routine habit, as simple as like making coffee and brushing your teeth. I just incorporated this habit into my everyday and that's how I was able to keep track. So I think the greatest bit of value that I gained from tracking this was, first of all, just understanding the type of clothes that I like to wear and how often I wore them and sort of helping me pay attention to why I may be grabbing certain items more often than others. It really helped me in my decluttering because I objectively saw that, look, for a year you straight up did not wear this can you think about letting it go or can you think about storing it away? It really helped me see and evaluate and narrow down what I wanted to keep and what I was maybe holding on to in a more, in, in for me, a more objective way than just being like, oh, it's nice, oh, it was expensive, oh, it's sentimental. Like, are there other reasons that I was holding on to these things but not wearing them? So that's where I found a lot of value in doing this. So I tracked my closet from July of 2020 all the way to July of 2021. Nowadays, I am not tracking anymore, but that's because I feel like I have narrowed down my wardrobe to something that I really enjoy all the clothes in there are clothes that I want to wear that I reach for and that I feel like I rotate through a fairly reasonable amount these days and I'm feeling really happy and settled with where I've come to within my personal style and my closet so I don't feel the need to track so meticulously anymore but at the time when my wardrobe was spilling over I had over 300 pieces of clothing I had no idea what I was wearing why I liked wearing things and I was just really confused with my personal style overall I also had a hard time decluttering so I really found tracking my wares really useful for those reasons because I feel like with anything whether it be finances or even your clothing or even your macros when you track things you have objective data that you can monitor evaluate and just see where you can modify things to match your needs and your lifestyle 
So starting off with t-shirts, my most worn t-shirt was a black t-shirt and a white t-shirt. What else is new? In general, when I think of the t-shirts that I like to wear, I like very sort of oversized, more boyfriend fit crew neck t-shirts. My most worn t-shirt was this one from Babaton. I love this t-shirt so much that I actually upgraded it this year and bought the sort of updated version from Aritzia, but this is my OG one. I think I bought it in like 2017. It's still in really great shape. It's not pilled or anything like that. It has lost its color a little bit. Some of my other t-shirts are quite thick and are a little bit stiff on the collar. So sometimes I find it almost annoying to pull it off the hanger. So whenever this one was available, I reached for it the most and I wore it, how many times was that? And I wore it 23 times throughout the year, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it makes sense to me because I have like five black t-shirts and I would rotate through them quite often. The only thing with this one is that it has faded a bit, but there aren't even any holes in it or anything. It's pretty good. I think when it starts to break down, I'm gonna turn this into a hair towel. In terms of white t-shirts, um, this one you wouldn't have seen in my wardrobe inventory because I actually did turn this t-shirt into a towel and it's because I stained the heck out of it and I also um, started to not really like how sheer it was. This is the Organic Cotton Crew tee from Everlane. I actually really like their t-shirts, but to be honest, I wouldn't really recommend their t-shirts if you want to get a white t-shirt because they are pretty thin, they're pretty sheer. Like you can see my hand through that. Um, if I wore like a nude bra, you can see it quite a bit. But this t-shirt I did wear a lot because I really like the way it draped on me. So I decided to not declutter it, use it as a hair towel. Sometimes I sleep in it, but like, you know, if I'm not wearing a bra, you're gonna see everything. So this is an at-home t-shirt. <laughs> so I'm surprised to know that I wore this one the most and I wore it 22 times out of all my white t-shirts. Two honorable mentions in my t-shirt category are this Anina Bing silk tea. This one is very sheer. You can even see the light right through it, but I think it's really cool. It has a really nice drape to it, which is why I think I reach for it a lot. It just looks really nice and relaxed. And then my other most worn white t-shirt. I think I can do a whole video on t-shirts, like what I look for, why I like them, things to think about if you guys want. Um, but the other one was this Organic Basic Silver Tech tee. This one is just a bit more fitted. I am starting to wear it out though. The collar is like starting to um, disintegrate a little bit. In terms of tank tops, I tend to wear them all year round. And the most worn black was this Everlane, I think it's called the cutaway, the cutaway tank. I wore this tank top 17 times throughout the year because I have, again, more than one style of tank top and I like to rotate through and reach for them. Um, but for whatever reason, I reach for this one the most. I think it's just because it's just really easy. It's casual, but I'm also able to sort of dress it up when I want to. It's not like a fuss to put on. Some of my other tank tops are kind of annoying to put on like the bodysuits and things like that. So I think this is just like an easy throw on tank top. And then my most worn white tank was this Wilfred tiny tank. You guys have seen me wear this a million times. I think it's cute, it's flattering. I'll wear it with leggings, I'll wear it with jeans. I also have it in black, but I tend to wear the white one more. And I think it's just, I really like the straps. You don't necessarily have to wear a bra with it. And I wore this 14 times. I feel like I wore it more than that because I definitely wear this a lot on weekends. So I feel like that number is inaccurate. In terms of button ups and Oxfords, um, I didn't really wear them that often at all. I am definitely more of a t-shirt and tank top person, but I found I wore my Oxfords and my button ups a lot more in the summertime. So my most worn was this linen one. So in the summer, it gets really, really hot here in Toronto and linen is clutch. So I wore this eight times. Uh, I really like this one. It doesn't look too, too wrinkly, but it's still really nice and breathable. And I sized up about three sizes to just get that really oversized look that I prefer. Most worn sweater, sweatshirt was this one from Little High, Little Low. I think this is called the Cobain sweater. It's just really cool, really grungy, oversized, very effortless, cool. I wore this 13 times which makes sense to me because I have a ton of hoodies and sweaters. Uh, no jumpsuits, no dresses, no skirts, so we can eliminate those categories. I decluttered all of those. And then getting into pants. So from like 2020 to 2021, I feel like that was such a weird year to even be tracking a lot of my clothes because I feel like I barely dressed up at all. 
things were in lockdown, things were closed. I think Toronto had the longest lockdown in most of Canada at the time. So it was truly a year of leggings, sweatpants, and comfy pants. So I barely reached for any of my dress pants, but out of the ones that I did, I wore these Everlane trousers the most. These are the put together pleat pant. They're just a really nice like cigarette style pant with pleats at the front and they sort of taper down the leg. And just a very easy pant if I wanna wear more casual tops and I wanna wear sneakers with it, which I prefer. It just mixes and matches really easily with this so I can see why I reached for this pair the most. So then my other most worn pants were these Lululemon joggers. These are called the on the fly joggers. They're called something else now. So I'll leave whatever their name right here or linked in the description. But these I really like because I could dress them up. You know, the stretchy waistband and drawstring just made it perfect for most days at work or even at home. So I wore these pants like 40 times and I have a similar pair that aren't a jogger, but they're pretty much the exact same. I would pretty much interchange between these and them throughout the year. But if we really wanna get real with my most worn pants, it's gonna be these Lululemon Align leggings. They came in clutch in the year of 2020, 2021. They look good with athleisure. They're really flattering. They're nice and high-waisted. They are my favorite leggings. To be honest, not the greatest if you do very, um, I guess, abrasive exercise. So if you're like a runner or you do spin or you lift and like the barbell rubs against your legs, things like that, these are not great because they do pill. But if you do like Pilates, yoga, things like that, that's what these are meant for and they're really nice for that. And for me, I just wear them on an everyday basis because leggings are pants and I'm gonna die on that hill. In terms of jeans, I was surprised by this one because I feel like I'm such a blue jeans girl and I love like my ripped denim and my 501s now and you know, I love denim and I always consider myself as someone who doesn't really wear black denim that often, but my most worn pair of jeans were my mom's Levi 531s in black. These I think have the highest waist out of all my jeans. They're really nice and flattering. I feel like they make my bum look really good and the sentiment of these jeans, I really, you know, I'm attached to it. These were my mom's. And I just get excited and happy when I put these on. I think like when you're curating your wardrobe and, and tracking it, I think, you know, it could also be a fact-finding mission of finding not only your most worn clothes, but your favorite clothes. Like some of these clothes are my most worn, but I don't know if they're necessarily my favorite. I think they're just the most practical, the most useful, the easiest. But I don't know if I would necessarily describe them as my favorite. Like I feel like being most worn isn't synonymous with being favorite in all cases, but for these, it definitely is. July 2020 to 2021 though, wasn't really a jeans era. So I wore these 15 times throughout the whole year. Honestly, that's more than I thought. These A Goldie crisscross jeans were my most worn blue jeans, which I was surprised about because I thought maybe like my denim forum Joni jeans, the ones with the holes in them, I wore more often. But I think the crisscross may be a little bit more on the trendy side, but I think the cut and the style of this denim can really stand the test of time. And then this sort of crisscross is just something that makes it more unique, even when it does fall out of trend. I think it's pretty fun. I love the fit of these jeans. They're really nice and relaxed. I love the color. They're really flattering. They don't lose their shape. And I wore these 12 times as well. So my most worn blazer, I don't have it anymore. I ended up giving it to my sister because I decided to do a declutter of my blazers earlier this year. You'll see that I got rid of a bunch of different colored ones, my navy one, things like that. And my most worn blazer was the Everlane oversized blazer. You've seen it in a million of my videos. It says here that I wore it 55 times and it was still in really beautiful shape, beautiful condition. But I ended up decluttering that one and giving it to my sister because even though I reached for that Everlane blazer a lot, I always felt my best in this one the Aritzia Agency Blazer. It's just a little bit more oversized, more effortless. It's got a, like a very subtle shoulder pad in here to make it more like angular, more structured. In the midst of one of my closet declutters, I decided to give it away because I just wanted to whittle down my blazer collection. And I found because I was wearing the Everlane one so much that I was barely reaching for this one. But whenever I wore this one was when I felt my best. So I decided to declutter my Everlane one, gave it to my sister, it was in perfect shape. 
and keep my Aritzia Agency Blazer. So with the Agency Blazer, I started wearing it a lot more after I decluttered my Everlane one. And in the year of 2020 to 2021, I wore this one 28 times. I'm sure it's far exceeded that. I wear this blazer at the very least once a week. Um, and it is definitely my favorite. That's kind of what I found really interesting about tracking my wardrobe. I thought that I would end up keeping all of my most worn items, but I think a lot of the times they would often end up being the easiest and most convenient, and they wouldn't always necessarily be the pieces that I would reach for when I wanted to feel my best, which I thought was a pretty interesting learning from doing this exercise. So yeah, something to think about. So apologies if there's a sudden shift in sound quality, but we should be back now. In terms of jackets, my most worn, I no longer have any more, but it was my Monk and Lou vegan leather jacket. I loved that jacket. Literally, sometimes I would wear it seven days a week. It was my number one layering piece. And I had that jacket for about three or four years. So I feel like when it comes to, you know, vegan leather polyurethane, it lasted the test of time for how often I wore it. I decluttered it recently and ended up buying this Acme Studios leather jacket secondhand off of Depop because my vegan one was starting to flake off everywhere. Like it would just be like on my skin, on my neck. The whole elbow was completely gone. The Moto jacket is like my security blanket. It's my number one layering piece. Definitely got a good cost per wear out of that jacket. In terms of parkas, my number one worn was this Uniqlo puffer jacket. I'm gonna do a whole video about like my winter essentials. You know, I hate the word essential, but like, what I look for in a winter wardrobe, I guess, if you guys wanna see that. Parkas are very important when you live in a climate that has all four seasons, that gets all four seasons to the extreme like I do. And I ended up wearing it. 44 times. So I did switch it out with like my wool coats, with my other parkas, with my Canada goose. Um, just depending on the weather, that's completely weather dependent. In terms of boots, 2020 was not a boots year. I have a lot of fun statement boots, but we didn't really go anywhere. I've, I've really only recently made it more of a point to get some nice rotation out of my clothing and dress up even if I'm like just going out to get a coffee because I wanna wear my wardrobe, I wanna feel good in it, and I wanna wear my fun pieces more than just for this like imaginary event that I think I'm gonna go to someday. But last year was a bit more of a write-off, so my most worn boots were my blendstones. These are the chisel toe blendstones in rustic brown. I found I mostly would wear these walking to and from work and then I would often switch to sneakers once I got to work, but sometimes I would just be lazy and wear these and I think they're fairly stylish enough for that. So I wore these 69 times in the year of 2020 to 2021. And in terms of sneakers, I thought my most worn would definitely be my high top Converse, but it wasn't. My most worn sneakers were actually these ones. And I did a video doing like a three month check-in of my wardrobe tracking. And I think these were even my most worn at the time back then. These are the native Mercury 2.0 sneakers. I don't think they make them anymore, but I will link something similar. They're like those fabric shoes that you can put in the wash. They kind of remind me of like all birds and you don't really need to wear socks with them if you don't want to. But I just really like the shape of these. They're very minimal on your foot. They don't make your foot look really like big and bulky like some sneakers can do that. I really like to wear them with leggings, even with jeans. I think it just adds like a really easy athletic kind of look. But I'm actually surprised that I wore these the most. I thought my Converse would win for for sure. So I tracked my wardrobe for an entire year and that's what I wore the most. I think even though it seemed a little bit hardcore overall, tracking my wardrobe and my wares really did help me in the end. It helped me with decluttering, it helped me figure out my personal style, and it really ultimately helped me figure out what I like to reach for versus what I don't. I think there's a lot of information that you can learn about yourself when you track certain things in your lifestyle, wardrobe being one of them. If you want a copy of the spreadsheet, I will leave it linked down below for you. It's always linked in all of my description boxes, so it doesn't really get buried in a lot of videos if you want to give it a try it's always there and thank you again to karma for sponsoring this video again if you want to download the app or install their extension on google chrome i will leave everything linked down below for you let me know if you guys are into like the style content because i'm like i don't know i'm vibing with it lately so leave me a comment thanks again for watching as always and i'll see you in the next one bye